Hello, people. Hello, children. A vlog. Blah, blah, blah. I should have thought about what I was going to say before I turned the camera on. Hello, people. Welcome to my vlog. Episode 1. I don't really have a plan of, <laughs> of what I'm doing. I don't actually know what a vlog is, I'll be honest. Um, but I'm just going to follow myself around with a camera for a bit and um, get some footage, share a few tips and tricks, show you my kind of day-to-day -day routine, or not routine, but just what what I get up to. I think there's not going to be too much of the sort of um, in-depth tutorial type thing, at least not for the vlog. I might do some separate things like that um, in the future. But for this, I thought just little snippets of what I'm up to being a spoon carver so there's going to be quite a heavy leaning towards spoon carving in the videos. Um, I thought I could maybe do a Q&A if anyone's got any spoon carving questions or anything you want to know so you know leave any comments that you you know any feedback on the videos any questions you have anything you liked or didn't like or um, uh, just to tell me that you that you actually watched it, that would be nice. <laughs> so anyway, enjoy the video. So this is my first day back to work after Christmas. Um, the couple of months leading up to Christmas was quite hectic and I left myself too much to do and not enough time to do it really. So I kind of burned myself out a little bit and needed a good couple of weeks of just getting away from it and um, resting up but I'm ready to get back to it now and i um, happy to have a couple of orders in at the moment so today I'm going to be starting um, a cooking spoon order for a lady I started working with last year called Kate from um, she has a, a website and an online shop called Cooking and Carafts which is really worth a look I'll, I'll put a link in the description of the video um, she's a really good cook and she teaches uh, pasta making and things like that so she sells some of my cooking spoons along with pasta making kits and other other sort of cooking items um, yes so she's she's ordered a batch of cooking spoons so I'll be splitting up a log today processing that I'll probably just get the axe work done today ease myself back into the work and then start carving them properly tomorrow. Um, so yeah, there it goes. Got some nice um, rippled grain in, in this wood. It was a sycamore, um, so that's quite nice. It's uh, if it's too rippled, it can be a bit of a pain to carve because you're constantly going with and then against and then with and then against the grain. But this is this is quite nice. That's gonna 
have a nice rippled effect. So these bits split off nicely, just how I wanted them to. So these will all be cooking spoons. These are the bits that didn't split so nicely, like this, that kind of went off, so that's not long enough for a cooking spoon. Or bits like this, where the grain's just going to be too much of an effort. So what I'll do with these bits is I'll cut them shorter and they'll be mini cooking spoons because I've got another order that I'm going to start next week or the week after um, for some mini cookers. So I try not to waste anything. If I can use it, I do. Otherwise, it'll go on the wood pile and it'll keep me warm. <laughs> There's a squirrel. What's he got? How's it Oh! There it goes. And there we go. This is a bloody wildlife. It's like a wildlife documentary. Collared dove just uh, heading off there. It's got some jackdaws, wood pigeons. It's like um, a David Attenborough film here. Anyway, thought I'd do a quick, because it's so small it won't take long, tour of my workspace. This is where the magic happens. So it's basically a woodshed um, that, I've, that I've taken over. I did have, um, I've got the space at the top of the garden that I was using in the summer, but when the weather started getting worse, I moved down here just because it's got a roof, basically. Um, so yeah, every every workshop is incomplete unless you have a skull, obviously. This is from a, a roe deer. I found it a few years back when I was um, doing a newt survey. What else? Um, I've got some cooking spoon blanks in the bag there. If you want to keep things fresh to carve another day, just wrap them in a plastic bag. You can sprinkle a bit of water in there as well. Um, and it'll keep them moist for ages and ages. Um, just don't leave them too long because they can rot, which isn't good obviously. Um, here is my spoon mule with a um, shave horse sort of a attachment bit um, made from plans from Michigan Sloyd who a guy called Dawson from I guess Michigan in America uh, it's really revolutionized my carving process particularly with cooking spoons and batches and things like that because being able to use a draw knife have two hands and be able to take those long cuts is really speeds things up and makes things a lot easier on on the hands and on the on the arms. Um, it's my chopping block and my axe. It's um, made by Julia Kaltoff. Kaltoff, yeah, from Sweden. Brilliant axe. Um, I'll probably talk through the tools that I use in maybe not this video, but another one. Uh, I'll take you outside. Usually there's a lot more, there's usually a lot more wood here. But at the moment I've just got some elm in the corner. Probably starting to go a bit worse for wear. Um, it's not so good for cooking spoons and batch stuff because it's quite thin diameter and it's quite knotty. So it's just a bit of a pain. Um, I wouldn't be able to split it out as easily as I, I did with with those cooking spoons. But hopefully I'm picking up some more big sycamore next week so that'll keep me going for a while. Um, what else? That's about it. <laughs>
So you'll have noticed that I'm not using a template to draw the um, to draw these spoons. I do sometimes use a template on some of my designs, but um, I find it can be quite restricting um, if you're trying to work with the uh, natural grain of the wood and follow the fibres, which I do try and do as much as possible. And also, if you're trying to be really like, um, economic with the wood use every piece and you don't want to throw away those gnarly bits that are a bit more difficult to to work um, then a template can make it a bit more difficult um, I'll show you a couple of examples I've got here so this one you can see the grains really straight um, I've just been able to just follow the straight line all the way down and this spoon's going to end up a pretty pretty accurate straight spoon um, this one you can see there's a bit of a bend in the grain, uh, which I've tried to follow. And if I had I been using a template, um, the straight line would have gone all the way off here, and I would have ended up cutting through a lot of the grain, uh, which can kind of weaken the spoon sometimes. You know, if you're cutting through a lot of grain, especially on a cooking spoon that you're sort of bashing about. Um, so I prefer to go with the grain. Um, I like a bit of a wonky spoon, it's got more character, you don't want every single spoon to be sort of straight and perfect and you know that's part of the sort of handmade uh, nature of, of, of this sort of thing. Um, I mean you can also see from these two bits the variation in grain that you get on just from the same, not just the same log but the same section of log, you know these, these were probably about this far apart in the log. Um, the other thing I want to tell you about is I use one of these pencils which is a watercolour pencil. You might find um, if you're trying to use a normal pencil or a buyer or something to draw on wood that it just doesn't um, show up too well. These are great. Uh, I've got no idea what they're supposed to be used for. If you're an artist let me know. Uh, it would be interesting to find out but they draw really well on wet wood so I mean you can see the lines show up really nice and strongly I only found out about these last year and I wish I had been using one for ages but um, yeah this is a Stadler I just got it from eBay a couple of quid, two or three quid maybe per per pencil and it will last you ages so that is my top tip for the day Okay, so what I've done on this one has been a bit heavy handed with the axe and as I'm coming down the handle I've hit it on the shoulder a bit which, if you can see, has caused a bit of a crack on the back side here. It's a really common mistake when you're starting out and um, gets less common as you, as you um, do a bit more carving. Luckily it doesn't happen to me too much these days but it's frustrating when it does because it can really ruin a spoon. If, if the crack goes too far you've lost the bowl and there's not really um, there's not really a way back from that. Uh, sometimes you see people who don't think they've hit it with the axe and they think it's just a drying issue. It is never a drying issue. You've always you've always just gone a bit too hard with the axe even if you don't think you have. So um, that's really something to keep an eye, an eye out for when you're axing down the handle.
calling it a day, you know, it's starting to get dark. Um, I've done a good batch of cooking spoons, all, ac all axed out, ready to start carving tomorrow. So, it's my first carving since about mid-December. So it's nice to kind of ease back into it, not go too hard. Um, and I got some stuff I can do inside. Uh, need to th review my international postage. Now I think lots of, lots has changed since Brexit, so that's a bit of a, a ball ache. But um, yeah, it's got to be done. So I'll probably go in and sort some stuff out and tinker the website and things like that for a bit. Just got on the spoon mule, carved a couple of these. My knives are pretty blunt, so I've just gone inside to sharpen up. Um, it's always really tempting to just work with blunt tools because I think a lot of people don't really enjoy sharpening. I don't. I don't enjoy it too much. It's um, it's a bit of a bit of a boring task for me. But it's always worth it because it just makes the job so much easier when you're constantly like really uh, straining with blunt knives. It's frustrating, it's dangerous in case you slip. Stop what you're doing, sharpen them. No benefits out of carving with blunt knives. Gotta get back on it. I got about 16. 16 to do the knife work on today, I think. So, let's get on. Done. I've got a nice basket full of spoons, freshly carved and ready to go inside, dry out for a few days and then some of them will get painted handles. I ended up with 19 finished and one, one for the firewood pile so it's not terrible. This is the one that I put a crack in with the axe work and turns out it was um, it was just a bit too much damage to to fix yeah I think I might leave it there for the first first episode any um, spoon carving questions you have put them in the comments and I'll do a Q&A next episode or in a future episode I really appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel do all the other things you're supposed to do like the video, share the video, 
Check out my website, links in the description of the video. Check me out on Instagram, at WP Woodcraft. See you next time. Until then, keep your tools sharp, keep all your fingers, and uh, have fun. See you later.